Good afternoon and welcome back to NASDAQ Trade Talks. I'm your host, Jill Malandrino, global markets reporter at NASDAQ. It's Friday. It's just about the market close. That means my partner in crime, Chris Dearborn. He's the managing director on NASDAQ's markets intelligence desk. He joins me for the weekly review from the mid. Happy New Year to you, Happy my New friend. Year, it's been a while since we've been together Absolutely. and the markets must have known they are solidly in the green. The Fed had some good comments out there today, if you're a bull anyway. And Fed looks like it's going to be patient and it's going to be flexible with rate hikes. You know, it's, it's really the key point that people have been looking for, especially after the last Fed cut back in December. You know, the markets are up anywhere from three and a half to four percent mm -hmm. today. It's as if it's a short covering, covering risk on rally that the markets have been looking for. And it's not just the Fed that's giving it a boost here. Mm -hmm. You've got good news out of China. Uh, you've got some great commentary on employment here in the United States. All these factors are really sending the markets off to the moon, and that's what right. we need. And right we're seeing, now. especially in the Nasdaq comp, you're right about that. We, 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 the, the, you know, the tech sector is recovering from this morning. China, mm -hmm. U.S., they're, they're trying to strike a deal on trade. We'll see when that happens. But right. let's go back to what Powell was saying. He's not hesitating to change balance sheet reduction and I think perhaps the market took a sigh of relief because liquidity has been a big concern with them dialing up the interest rate. Pressure. Absolutely. So I think what you've seen here is that the Fed and the, their, and the rest of the Fed speaker today, Mester was out this morning before mm -hmm. Powell even got out there and it was a full court press. What you have here is them clarifying their message saying that they are looking at the markets. So it's not just data dependent, but also market dependent. Mester said on CNBC this morning, and it's worth quoting, we always left open the fact that if the economy deteriorates and we need to change our balance sheet policy, we're going to be changing the policy. That's forceful. And with that, you have Powell coming up with Bernanke and ex-Fed Chairman Yellen talking about we're going to be patient and prepared to adjust policy outlook quickly if needed. So right there, that is the sigh of relief you were looking for. It reverses the last commentary that he made after the rate hike. So what you're looking at there is really it's not on autopilot. That's just a term used because it's been running so well. But yes, there are issues that they're going to have to address. And with that is the QT as opposed to the QE, right? $60 billion a month, that they're, uh, $50 billion a month, six. Uh, uh, and what they're looking at is do we need to s stall that back a little bit? Because if you do that, you know, it acts as another cut to the market. You know, the Fed fund futures right now are weighing in only a 5% chance of a rate hawk for all of 2019. And to 33, that's one third of a chance of a cut for 2019, which is a complete reversal of where we were a month ago. Right. And the markets have reacted. Now, granted, the markets have always been kind of forward looking, mm -hmm. um, childish if you want. We want it now, we want it now, we right. want it now. And the Fed has to be the parent. We don't have to give you everything now, but we are aware of everything that's going on. They're saying the right things, they're giving the right body language, and the markets are reacting positively to what they are saying. Right. It's and really, that is good for us. But it's interesting how you're saying how it kind of flipped around, where, whether it's 50%, 30%, 50% think we'll get it caught, 50% think we won't. So it's kind of, there, there, there still are risk factors that are out there, despite the fact that we are solidly in the green today. Again, mm -hmm. the S&P and Dow up over 3%, the comp up over 4%. But there are risk factors out there. I mean, today was good in terms of what the Fed said for the bulls, but they, right. but they do still have to be independent of the market and look at, you know, that jobs number we got from this morning in ADP fantastic. from yesterday, it was fantastic, right. right? By all means, they should be thinking about raising interest mm -hmm. rates if you, if you isolate the market away from that. The economic data in this country, for the most part, mm -hmm. has been solid for a long time. Unemployment, right. wage growth have been strong. ADP validated the non-farm payroll this number. The headline number was tr fantastic. Over right. 300,000 new jobs created versus 180-ish expected. And that ADP number validates the move that we're having here with the non-farm payroll. The key factor there is that you have more people coming back to the market looking for jobs. That's the key factor. And you have wage growth year over year. Mm -hmm. Those upticks show that the consumer is coming back. Remember, GDP is based off of consumer spend. The majority of it, two thirds right. of it comes from consumer spend. And the payroll number creates almost 80% of that. So if you have more people working, higher wages, and you have low unemployment showing you that the employers need labor. They need folks to work. So they're still looking for people to hire. Right. That bodes well for this strong economy here in the United States. And with that, 
on the economic side of things, you can make an argument that the Fed goes, well, maybe we do need to raise rates, but right. we're not going to get to that argument yet. Right now, we'll mm -hmm. take the piece of cake that they've given us today and eat it. All right. Well, let's talk about GDP. We'll go back mm -hmm. there for a minute. And Trump is on behind us now yeah. talking about the government shutdown. I don't remember exactly who it was, so I can't attribute it. But someone on CNBC yesterday had mentioned for every two weeks that the federal government is shut down. That's going to ding GDP 10 basis points. And if this continues to go on and on, then you start to look at, you know, 25 bips, 50 bips. Right. So we've had a lot of great news. Mm -hmm. The one piece of news that we need to really send this market going is for the government to agree to end this crisis that we have right now and get the budget passed. Mm -hmm. So what you're looking at is a bipartisan, you know, the bickering that's going to start right now because the new Congress just got sworn in. Pelosi's at the helm of the House, mm -hmm. you know, and it's, you know, locking horns. Yeah. So who's going to blink first? And the Oval Office isn't going to blink. Right. Well, yeah. If you're a federal worker, it's, it's, it's got to right. you've so got you've got to be concerned. Let's, absolutely. Let's, Especially if you if you depending on that paycheck to pay yeah. your bills. Yeah. Right. Federal so. government or not, you know, I, I like getting my paycheck every couple of weeks. So let's let's shift gears. Let's right. talk about the trading week ahead. There are, I think, 11 to 12 Fed speakers on the circuit. Mm -hmm. We have a number of data coming out in conferences. This is when it could be fun to right. trade. J.P. Morgan, their big healthcare conference is coming Biggest, out. You know they're going to talk about the cell gene deal. Mm -hmm. um, you, you're going to get some announcements out of that. And then CES, there's right. a lot going on next week. You know, there, there is. So the healthcare conference is going to be in full swing. J.P. Morgan mm -hmm. is the premier conference for the healthcare space. You've seen a number of pre-announcements. Uh, coming out this week ahead of the conference. So a lot of the smaller biotech companies have something to talk about. They're talking about their data. They're talking about their trials. And they want to have those investors have those one-on-one -on -one conferences. They want to present to have a full room. This is going to generate headlines. It's going to generate alpha within stocks one way or another. And what's going to happen is it's going to give investors choices of which stocks they want to pick to invest in and which ones they want to stay away from to begin the year. And CES is always great in Vegas, right? Yeah. I mean, you're going to see some awesome items on the cutting edge of technology for the consumer here. And with that, you're going to get a lot of good ideas of what companies are working on, where their spend is going to be. So two great conferences to go with a lot of the economic data. And then as a follow-up, you got Fed speak mm -hmm. up and down the week, right? You've got almost every uh, director speaking at one point or another towards the end of the week on Thursday and Friday. And with that, you're going to see if there's any clarifying comments to go along with the good news that we had today that the markets are reacting to or any contrarian point of views. And with that, the minutes get released next week as well. So I'm kind of curious to see what the actual discussions were based around mm -hmm. the decision to cut the rates, even though it was a unanimous vote. Where the discussions and where the concerns were, I think that's going to be key. So you've got, and you also got CPI next week. Yeah, it's going to be which crazy. Which is going to be a, a key factor coming in here to the end of the Q4 sales mm -hmm. and see if the markets really can react and if the price point was actually pushed forward to the consumer and how well they were able to take that in. All right, well, in. buckle up, guys. You guys yep. are going to be super busy on the Good mid. Good. Thank you, Chris, as always, for joining me. Thank you, Jill. And thank you for joining me throughout the week. I'm Jill Malandrino, Global Markets Reporter at NASDAQ.